Hey, what's up, guys? Jose Duarte here with our special guest, Mr. Ojeda. Mauro Antonio Ojeda. Nice to meet you guys. Welcome, welcome. So in today's video, we're going to be interviewing my friend here. We met in Eldo, El Dorado High School here in Vegas. We met uh, my junior year. And we basically became pretty good friends till then. And my friend here is a veteran for the Marine Corps. And I basically want to ask him some questions of what made him join the Marine Corps, what made him choose the military, uh, his experience and basic training, his experience in the training pipeline, how his experience went in the fleet and what advice he has for those who who want to join the Marine Corps or the military in general. So in today's podcast, we are drinking Jocko Fuel. Oh yeah, there's actually some good stuff right here. Good stuff, clean energy drinks. I am not getting sponsored for this, but this is something that I drink occasionally when I have the money because it's pretty pricey but I really recommend for everybody to drink and hey, hopefully you do get sponsored though that'd be nice that really would at Jocko Winning so yeah man so let's get started with what made you choose the Marine Corps <laughs> it's funny because uh first movie I ever watched as a, as a kid that was military related was major pain. I don't know if you've ever watched that. I do. Yeah, and like that's kind of what introduced me what uh to what the military was like, or what ROTC was gonna be like. <laughs> and I, I I always had that mindset. I always wanted to be a part of ROTC, and I just I like the way that like they all came together to like, like as brothers. You know, they like as brothers to just like just little kids do anything. And I thought it was badass seeing the training and like getting yelled at. I was like, oh, I want to get yelled at like that. It's pretty cool. But I mean, major pain is not really like. Nah, it's it's a comedy, bro. But I also yeah. thought, like <laughs> I also grew up like just watching like uh, Saving Private Ryan and like a bunch of other like war movies, and I was like, dude, these men are out there like, you know, actually like doing some badass shit. I was, I was expecting like, I you to say like, like freaking Full Metal Jacket. Nah, I didn't. I didn't watch that till like, till I was like eighteen. I think it was like oh, post Marine Corps. I actually watched that one, and I was like, wow, that's actually like, that's like legit. <laughs> No, I said I did watch it when I was like 15. I do remember now, and I'm like, wow, that's what I'm gonna get myself into. Like, that's what boot camp is like. It was it was mainly that that boot camp scene that I watched. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the entire movie. It, I didn't watch the entire movie till like afterwards. But yeah. yeah, like just seeing these dudes like just out there doing like some badass shit. I just had so much respect for them, and I'm like, dude, I want to do something like that. You know, be a badass. How old were you when you when you saw that, or when you decided to? Uh, when I actually decided I'm gonna join the Marine Corps, I was uh I was a junior in high school because I was still debating on whether it was gonna be uh whether I was gonna join the Navy mm -hmm. or the Air Force because I knew we had an Air Force base here, and I got really interested in uh, aviation because uh, that one ROTC trip that we took to oh yeah to San Diego yeah to San Diego to see the the Blue Angels I think, then I was like wow I want to be a pilot. But my dumbass didn't go in as a pilot. <laughs> Don't you have to join the officer? Yeah, you have to be an officer for that. Officer. I found that out the hard way. Uh, next best choice would have been air crew, which I kind of regret not being air crew because some badass stuff. You shoot machine guns out the back of of a helicopter or like any kind of aircraft, and it's pretty cool. Like, didn't you want to do a combat aviation something like that? Uh, originally I wanted to be like the second. I wanted to be, like, the weapons operator for, uh, like, F-16s, F-18s. But, yeah, officer. And I'm like, nah, I don't have time. I don't have the money to go to college. So, might as well mm. just uh, join enlisted and do something aviation. And I chose aircraft mechanic. So, you made that choice in junior year. Yeah. That's when yeah. we met. That's when I was, uh, that's Damn. when I got sworn in, uh, like, the end of junior year. It was the summer. Going to senior year, I got sworn in. I was already in the the late entry program, and pretty much Damn. like I, I was already on track to join the Marines. Junior year was my year to actually decide on what I was gonna do, and then I finally made that decision end of junior year. And how was your conversation when you brought it up to your parents? 
uh, honestly, they supported it. They were like, whatever you want to do, mijo, as long as you don't do drugs. And I was like, okay, well. I know. I actually never did drugs when I was younger. What about your mom? How was she? Uh, She was scared at first, honestly, but she saw that this is what I really wanted to do, so she was okay with it. She was like, all right, uh, like I'll sign your paperwork, like. Because I had to get a waiver because I was, like, I think 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. Like, 16, about to turn 17 at the time. You need a waiver for your parents. And they both supported it. They were like, all right, this is what you want to do. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I remember you were pretty fit in high school, too, in your senior year. Yeah. And And freaking, because we we did that after school with RTC. And sometimes we had to, like, do some, some physical stuff. And I remember you would, like, outrun me. And I was pretty fit, too. Yeah, you were taller, too, and you were, like, you I was were way fit. more fit than I was. I was still kind of a little chubby. Like, no, nah, like, my body would, like, probably look better. Like, you were more, like, chubby, but you could outrun me. You could, like, outwork me, too. So, like, I was pretty surprised. Like, you were ready. I'm pretty sure the the latest entry program, like, yeah. Like, I did not start for. actually getting dedicated to, like, working out and loving fitness until I actually started going to the recruiting office. Once a week, and just mm-hmm. ever since then, like on my off time, I would just start training. Like I would work out. I have friends, like ROTC guys. I'd always take you guys out to like yeah. PT. I joined the physical fitness team. Uh, I start going to the gym with my friend when he was going to East Tech. There was like a once a week gym club. Oh damn! And uh, yeah, I just started getting like big into fitness, and I never really felt like I was uh, like I, I didn't know what I was doing. I just worked out you know i just <laughs> ran i just did this i like whatever and you just did whatever look look for yeah dude like i was out there like all motivated screaming cadences and stuff i created my yeah. own cadence remember that one with like major hook yeah major hook <laughs> shout out to major hook yeah you're the best freaking um well it's because a lot of people they ask oh what should i do before i go what should i work on and something i work i found out that like if you want to join the marine corps you have the delayed entry program, and that's a start, right? Like, for those who want to join. Yeah. Like, that's a start. Your recruiter, if you actually want to do better in your PFT, your recruiter is going to help you out if you actually ask him. He's going to put you to work, and also the depth, pro- or the depth is going to help you out to better your running, your pull-ups. And right now we have planks. We don't have crunches no more. I um, thought it was optional. Wasn't it optional? It's not that, optional like, anymore. It's planks. What? Hey, dude. Marine Corps is constantly changing. Yeah. The military is I hate it. Changing. I hate it. I hate planks. I Jeez. I prefer crunches more. Planks, I suck man. at planks. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> horrible right there. I suck at planks, but I still train. I still do planks. I try to get better every time. And so once that, uh, that date, because I know you graduated high school, and then, then you had to ship out like two weeks after? I had about one full week. And uh, as soon as I graduated, like my, uh, I went to my graduation and walked across the stage. Now I had a, had a flight set to Mexico to say bye to like the rest mm-hmm. of my family because I knew while in the Marines, I wasn't going to be able to travel back to Mexico for like till I get out. And so I just went there for about five days, uh, said bye to everyone, and then came back for two days. And then I shipped out literally like seven, eight days, I think, after graduation. Damn. And how was, like, were you pretty nervous or anxious? Oh, yeah. No, I was, if anything, <laughs> I was nervous. Like, while I was in Mexico, I was enjoying the time of my life. I was like, every second of this trip is going to count because I'm not going to be this happy or this free for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it, it was definitely, it was worth it. Like, I got to say bye to just about my entire family back there. Oh, yeah. And where, where did you go for MAPS? Uh, MAPS n- here at n- in Nellis Air Force Base, I did MAPS. Oh, you did? And I hear nowadays they go to San Diego for maps. Well, I went to, like, the um the last maps. That's what we're talking about, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's somewhere in San Diego. I don't, I don't remember where exactly it was, but... I went to Salt Lake. Salt Lake City? Yeah. I didn't mind uh, literally the day before I went to boot camp. I think that was the final one where you got to do the little duck walk in your underwear. You in, like, a room full of 40 dudes yeah, in yeah. their underwear just doing duck walks. Yeah, my experience, we they drove us out to Salt Lake, and then from there, we spent the night there. The next day, we went to MAPS, and then they flew us out from Salt Lake to San Diego. And it's pretty weird, because we live in Vegas. Like, 
Yeah, like we're right. <laughs> like, like freaking four, four hours hour, away. I think four or five hour drive. But hey, <laughs> like I, I enjoy the freaking the hotel there because they gave us a voucher too. Yeah, you didn't have to pay for it. It was free. No, yeah, and then <laughs> the game room we could play pool, Xbox. I'll talk to people there. Say your final goodbyes. Yeah. Yeah. Now I remember I, I was with like five dudes from Vegas and uh, we hung out in the jacuzzi in the the pool outside the hotel room before. The day before boot camp, and we just started talking about like, wow, like hey, enjoy your last day of freedom because it's about to go down tomorrow. And I, mm-hmm. I remember I just could not sleep that night, and I I think I fell asleep at around maybe one in the morning, yeah. and I was I was just nervous the whole time. I woke up like just a few hours later, yeah. There's someone knocking on the door like, hey, it's time to go, it's time to go, and I'm like, all right, mindset, this is it, you're about to go to boot camp, like, get ready. Well, when did you join? 2014, right? 2014. 2014 is when I went to boot camp, mm-hmm. June of 2014. But uh, the late entry program mm-hmm. was July of 2013. Yeah, so the the Marine Corps is way different than it was now. Yeah, a lot of a lot of things change up. <laughs> I like the planks idea just because like it also works on um your mental fortitude because you can hold yourself there for a while. It's just up to your head, on, right? Uh, like how strong your head can be to keep you in that position. Cause it sucks, but it's good for discipline. Like, it makes sense why they do it. Yeah, like that's that's what I tried explaining to everybody that once you go on basic training, your drill instructors are going to make you so uncomfortable, but it's for a reason. Like everything they do is for a reason. Even they're going to tell you everything we do is for a reason, and it's it's true. Like even by the way you hold your plate, your cups, by the way you walk, everything you do is for a reason. But we could talk about that later. Um. So you went to MAPS in San Diego, that's what you said? Yeah, San Diego. The day before I went to boot camp, we did our final MAPS. Uh, went back to the hotel room, and then the next day is when we went to boot camp. And how was that That first experience of meeting a drill instructor? Not your, not the Black Friday, but like actually seeing the, one and getting yelled at by one. The, the pickup yeah. drill instructor. <laughs> yeah, honestly... It was everything I dreamt about because I, I, w- I would just watch videos on, like, what I'm supposed to be expecting. You know, I was super excited. Uh, I would research as much as possible. And when I seen him, like, step onto that bus, I was like, I was excited, honestly. I think I had a smile on my face. I was like, oh, this is <laughs> it. Like, this is what I've been dreaming of. And, yeah, that smile went away pretty quickly. Yeah. When they're like, everybody sit up straight. Respond. <laughs> I <heard>. sir. <laughs> I say respond. Yeah, yeah like. When you actually go to YouTube and you like search up Marine Corps boot camp, you you notice right away how different Marine Corps is different from other branches. No, oh, yeah, like they want you to scream. If you don't scream, they freaking they punish you just for not screaming. And you had to scream and, loud, and I, top of your lungs. Yeah, I remember you you said that too. You said that like, oh yeah, my first experience with the drill instructor, I was pretty excited, and I was trying to put that when I went. I was trying to put that what you said like. Damn, this is for real. Like, this is a real game. Yeah, this is, it. This <laughs> this is, is a real it. deal. Yeah. And then they make us run into their freaking their red room. Yeah. Oh, well, don't forget about the yellow footprints first. Well, the yellow footprints, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, once you go inside that red room, it's like, oh, shit. Like, we can't go back no more. <laughs> yeah. You're just standing there all nervous. Everyone's all nervous. They're like, no one's looking around. Yeah. You're that's, yeah. Like, your best not to stand out. When you go, everybody's going to be nervous. Everybody doesn't know. Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody knows. No matter how many times you research it, you're never really going to know what to expect. And then YouTube only puts up like 10% of what actually, yeah. what actually <laughs> goes on. They only put the cool stuff. They yeah. don't put like anything that actually goes on. But I don't want to freaking, I don't want to spoil it for everybody. But YouTube only puts up 10% of what actually goes on in boot camp. And well, how was your phone call? Were, were they actually screaming? Dude, I don't remember. I was like, <laughs> I was just screaming the whole time. I just remember just everyone was screaming. And like, I'm pretty sure I talked to my parents about it after boot camp. And yeah. they said they did not understand anything <laughs> that I said. All they understood was like, blah, 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 blah. And then I had them hung up. Were they scared? Uh, Nah, because I told them ahead of time, like, I'm going to get one phone call. Then I'm going to mm-hmm. let you guys know that I got here safe. And that's about it. And they're like, okay, but they were just like they they were just in shock. Like, what what is going on? Like, they all they hear is screaming, yelling. Like, he's barely going to boot camp. Is he at war right now? Like, no. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But what I did notice, like, 
from other YouTube videos is the drill instructors are yelling while the recruits are like speaking on the phone. That didn't really happen when I went. So I don't know that they changed that because they weren't really hearing anymore. It really depends on the drone instructors, I guess, because um, a lot of times some of them will be a little bit more lenient. Oh. Unlike when you're making your final phone call just to like make sure that your family knows that you're safe. Other yeah. times, like they want to make them know that you're about to start. <laughs> <laughs> that you're about to start. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I remember I called my wife and she was just like, okay. I was like, okay, bye. I love you, bye. That's it. Actually, that reminds mm. me. Uh, at the end of my phone call, mm. I did manage to to whisper to my parents, like, los quiero mucho, which means, like, I, I love you guys so much in Spanish. And no one caught that, so I didn't get in trouble, but mm. I got to say that. I'm pretty sure I didn't you caught it. They're just like, uh, all right, I whispered that. Stand like, by. <laughs> <laughs> stand by, recruit. But, yeah. And then, like, your whole experience in boot camp, like, how how was it? It was it was pretty wild. Like I remember, um, was it Shark Week or what was it? The Shark Attack Black Friday. Yeah, Bl oh, Black, Black Friday. Friday. The day I got to meet my drone instructors. As soon as that whole speech, uh, the whole speech was over with, and uh, we had to get Boy. online in front of our racks and stuff, and start getting yelled at by every single one of them. I I had a smile on my face again, like at the bus, because mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, this is literally what I pictured it was gonna be like, just getting yelled at nonstop. I did get caught for smiling, which was not a good idea. Luckily, I wasn't able to uh, get IT'd just yet. We had to get the training on what IT was first. Mm. So they couldn't IT me. Oh, yeah, that's right. But, yeah, it was just a bunch of, like, just nonstop, just screaming, yelling, getting things out of your bag, and just, like, just complete chaos. Just, just screaming, yelling, and, like, it's hard to focus, but that's what it's there for, to, like, make sure that you know how to um, how to operate under stress and pressure. Correct. I remember mine. It was, it was pretty crazy. And then I don't know if you met anybody who went to the, uh, they call it the pork chop platoon, the medical platoon, that one, or the people that failed the IST. No, I don't remember what platoon that was. No, I don't. I don't think any of our guys failed. I'm pretty sure we were all just ready. Because when I was in receiving week, I met some people that, that were in the. I forgot what platoon, the PCP. Uh, they filled the IST, and then they had to stay there for an extra three weeks to get conditioned, which is another thing I recommend for those guys that are in the depth. Make sure you could actually like do good on your freaking IST. Make sure you could actually do pull-ups because you don't want to freaking stay there another an extra three weeks trying to get conditioned. So... I met some guys that were in there, and they were like, oh, look, we got to do it this way. And they just thought, like, they knew everything already because they were there three weeks longer. And then once we hit Black Friday, man, they thought they knew everything, bro, but. Psh, yep. You just knew guys. <laughs> they were else. hella scared. <laughs> our, guide, our guide was a freaking short dude, and he was our guide on, that, uh, on the PCP. Because I guess he knew ROTC. Boy, he got fired, like, in a week. Like, just because you think you know everything, once you're in that stressed, under-pressure environment, you you go mental. Like, you don't know what you're doing. You freeze up. It's just crazy. And it's it's because, like, we're civilians, right? Like, yeah. We don't have that mentality of, like, chaos going on or around us. So it's pretty crazy. And you're almost guaranteed to get kicked or like, uh, so the same guide on that you begin with is almost guaranteed to get fired. Like, yeah, it, it's always constantly rotating. They're always choosing like the best of the best. Yeah. The guide pretty much. Yeah. We, we got new guides throughout boot camp squad. Like if you want to have like a freaking like become a squad leader or a guide. It's very competitive. And at times it sucks because if the people under you mess up, then you get punished as well, even though it wasn't your fault. And I remember, like, I would mess up a lot, too, even though I'm freaking, I was 26 when I joined, or 25, so I'm some, I would mess up a lot, too. But I don't think my squad leader ever got punished, but 
I did see other squad leaders get punished for something other recruits did under them. They I teed them together, and it it sucked. Squad leaders also eat last, yeah. And guys, and whenever the guide finishes, everybody finishes. So that's why everyone kept getting mad at the guide because <laughs> sometimes the guy just ain't hungry and he just ain't, takes a couple bites and he's like, "All right, you guys are all done." Yeah. And then so everyone will just hate him. Just Don't like, be that kind of guy. If you just again, like, if you want to take the leadership roles or leadership positions, just know like, it's a lot of responsibility. And then, um, but I think what what did you like most about basic training? I know, I know, it sucks, but there has to be something that you like the most. Yeah, honestly, just getting to meet all these different different dudes that that were in my platoon. We're all from different parts of the parts of the country. Some of them were actually from Guam too. Oh damn! And uh, just getting to know these guys, like there there will be a little bit of downtime where you can like yeah. talk amongst yourselves and like kind of get to know each other. Mm-hmm. You always have like those country guys that are always talking about like you know Texas, yes sir. <laughs> oh yeah. Stuff. You got the Mexicans <laughs> who are like you know. Just doing Mexican stuff over here in the corner. <laughs> yeah, that's what's cool about the military, too, is, like, yeah. everybody, like, you get all the parts of the country, even from other countries as well. Yeah. You get to meet other people. Some of them aren't even citizens, too. When yeah. I was there, we had, like, maybe 10 guys who weren't citizens. Uh-huh. But at that time, they did give them citizenship at towards the end of boot camp. Yeah, that's what's cool. I mean, you get to meet people. Do you still keep in touch with them or some of them? Not every single one of them. Not the ones from boot camp just because that was, like, so early on in my career. And uh, we didn't really have our phones at the time, so I couldn't get their contact information. Mm. So just throughout the years, we just started adding each other back on Facebook. I do talk to uh, a couple of them. I remember my friend Prunty, who got fucked with a lot in the <laughs> in boot camp. Like, he messaged me almost every day, like, good morning. And, like, we just send each other, like, dumbass Snapchats of, like, our faces. Yeah. And, yeah, I keep up with him. Uh, I don't really keep up with the other guys that I, I went to boot camp with from Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. I seen one of them is uh, working Metro now. I seen him when the Golden Knights won the Stanley Cup. By the way, Golden Knights. It was pretty cool. Just uh, talking to him for a little bit. But, you know, he had a job to do, so I couldn't talk to him that much. But, yeah, that's that's probably my mm-hmm. favorite part of boot camp is just – Getting to know everybody, getting to see all these different cultures, because mm-hmm. you you only know where you're from. Like, say I, I was from Las Vegas. That's like the only thing I know. Like, yeah. That's what I know about life. Yeah. I don't know about like, you know, the country life, the rednecks, like, you know, the blacks, no, none of that. And then like, since you don't have your phone, you actually have to talk to people mm-hmm. <laughs> and like get to know them. You get to meet like you get to know their girlfriends and freaking how they like making love and <laughs> And they get pretty discreet about that. Yeah, that's what the military guys, that's what they talk about, especially especially in the field. Yeah, so <laughs> bored, you're just like, yeah, you just start talking like that. Especially in the field, you're just like chilling, and then all of a sudden you just start talking about sex and freaking booty holes and crack and but it's just military stuff. I mean, you don't, you won't get it until you're actually in it, right? Or yeah, honestly. Because a lot of people are just like, wow, I wouldn't ever bring that up to, like, anybody. But yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. But you'll be surprised what, like, just a whole <laughs> group of, like, Marines or, like, you know, people with the same goal. Yeah. Just talk about it. And just it, it gets stupid. Like, normal no, people just don't understand. No filter. Mm, zero <laughs> filter whatsoever. So what's the least thing you like? Mm, it's actually a tough one because... Uh, the PT was pretty bad, but I wouldn't say that's my least favorite. I think the least favorite was just mass punishment. Like, you would have nothing mm. to do with, like, why this guy's rack was unlocked, but everyone's going to get punished because yep. as a group, you should watch out for each other, not just yourself. Yeah. But so, yeah, probably mass punishment would, would be my least favorite part of boot camp. I remember my drill instructor at the end, he was like, oh, yeah, sometimes I was just bored and I would just – Torture you guys for no reason. Yeah, like you guys could be <laughs> doing everything perfectly fine, but he's gonna make something up. Yeah, it's just what they did. Did you ever think of becoming a drill instructor? If I would have reenlisted and would have gotten histed or something, like I probably would have gone the drill instructor route just because, you know, I get to release some stress on these little recruits, these little bald headed yeah. kids with motivation. Well, what about like your cadence? You think you'd, you'd be able to sing it? Uh, at the time, yeah. Nowadays, like, I, I, I can't project my voice as good as I used to. Yeah. What about Range Week? You like that? Oh, yeah, that was fun. Like I think that's everybody's favorite. Yeah. 
It was relaxed. Mm-hmm. You don't really deal with the drone structures too much. And it's more more of a professional environment. You're there to yeah. learn how to fire your weapon and be effective with that weapon. Speaking of that, when I was there, Russia had freaking went to war with Ukraine. So all our judges were like, guys, get ready. You guys are going to war. <laughs> Russia already took over Ukraine. Just be prepared because I actually take this serious because you never know if you're going to be out there. And then our... Um, other, what is, what do they call the instructors for the rifle? Mm. The range coaches, um, some of that. I don't, I don't yeah. remember. They do have a different name than drill instructors. Yeah, those instructors. They were like, all the infantry guys are gonna die. And who's <laughs> gonna go? <laughs> you and all the infantry guys. <laughs> uh, just trying to scare the infantry guys. <laughs> Man, they were trying to scare everybody. Yeah. Now when and I then, when I was in, it was uh it was ISIS barely coming up. Uh, so I remember it was uh not boot camp, but it was MCT. When I went to a uh, combat <laughs> training, that's when ISIS started becoming a thing and started yeah. becoming more of a threat. And uh, that's when everyone was started just talking about nothing but ISIS. And uh, what was that one disease that was going around? Ebola. Ebola. Yeah, Ebola and ISIS. So that's what Damn. I was just prepared for. Like, don't get Ebola, kill ISIS. Ours was Russians and COVID. It's always something. It's, <laughs> it's always, always something. something. <laughs> it's always something. What's worse, COVID or Ebola? Come on. Well, Ebola... Yeah. Uh, Ebola eats you from the inside. Yeah, but didn't Ebola kill you but just by contact? Yeah, like, it, I don't know. It had something to do with... uh, It just started eating you up from the inside and, like, you just started shitting blood. But the thing about Ebola, too, is if you actually caught it, you died instantly, so it wasn't, like spreading that much as with covid i mean covid you could like freaking recover 99 percent chance that you will yeah it's just like the flu on steroids pretty much yeah you caught it no no nah, well i wouldn't really know like i never really we catch caught it. it but you didn't feel anything uh maybe i, I probably yeah. did catch it once or twice but i honestly like i was perfectly fine mm-hmm. like i never really had any symptoms yeah because my so wife caught know. it and well i mean we sleep together but that I didn't feel no symptom. But you had it, though, technically. Well, if she caught it. That yeah. means you probably didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like I said, I didn't feel no symptoms. Yeah, at least it wasn't Ebola. And then I remember we had to wear a mask over there. I kind of liked it, but it was kind of annoying. I liked it because, like, you were able to yawn in the mornings or smile. Nah. It covered your <laughs> face. But then, like, towards the end, they made us take it off now. But still, my drill instructor, he was still able to see when I wasn't responding. I don't know how, but he did catch me one time and he punished <laughs> me. Even with the mask on. Even with the mask on. Like, they're freaking, they know. They're like, they're freaking, like, all the details, they catch it. And I, I wasn't responding. Not because I didn't like him. He was actually my favorite drill instructor, the J. Yeah, the J hat. The yeah, actually, the J no, hat. Mine was probably the kill hat. I actually like them, man. Uh, it was in the morning, so my vo- my throat is like kind of scratchy in the morning, so I can't really like yell at the top of my lungs in the mornings. So I wasn't really responding, and I was doing you know how we do our beds every morning. Yeah. Yeah. So we we're doing like, our five hundred seconds to get all that stuff done. Five hundred drill instructor seconds, which is like actually yeah, is like, like sixty like, seconds, yeah, <laughs> maybe less too. <laughs> Depends how fast they could count. And then freaking, he went up to me. He's like, Duarte, why aren't you responding? Hi, sir. He's like, bitch. <laughs> whenever I see something, you respond. Get in the deck. I was like, shoot, bro. I finally caught you. <laughs> like he, even though I was wearing my mask, he he caught me, man. So, like they they're pretty good at what they do. Like they're professionals, and you won't you won't get it. I mean, you you will get away from some stuff, but not everything. They will catch you. Yeah. And. I know when you got out, when you graduated, I I got to see you. Yeah, I went back to a uh, for a high school and you're a hella skinny. Oh yeah, it's a lot of running <laughs> and not a lot of getting fed. Like I'd probably just eat like a little bit of rice and that's about it. Well, I mean, and freaking and MCRD, you do get to eat a lot, right? Or I don't know how you how you get you. guaranteed three days or three meals a day. That, that's for sure, but. Uh, because I was 
one of the little chubby Mexicans, like the drone oh. instructors would always. You got the you know, special treatment. Yeah, they would, they would check me out. <laughs> They'd be like, "You better not be eating that ice cream." And oh like, no, I would not. I would not get ice cream. No, any cookies or ice cream that was like prohibited, unless, unless they weren't there, and it was just a senior drill instructor. Senior drill instructors are always chill, compared to other, compared to the ones below him. But just don't it, piss him off. Yeah, don't piss him off because they still have that drill instructor vibe in them, and. But yeah, when I was there, I was able to like, you still get your freaking 100 seconds or 200 seconds to eat. You still got to eat quick. But I remember I would get like freaking three loaves of bread and chug that or dip it in water. Yep. And just do eat. whatever to just get yeah. it all down your system. Like, yeah. You don't like, even get to <clears throat> taste it. Just just get it down there. Especially like if you're worried about carbs, don't worry about carbs in there because you're going to burn it hella quick. You probably need some carbs up there. Too. Yeah. If you don't have carbs, you're going to pass out. So, like, when I was there, I would eat, like, a lot of bread, especially, like, for dinner, because when it was night, I would get hungry. Yep. Any of you guys ever get caught with peanut butter packets? Oh. <laughs> one guy. There was one guy that got caught with, like, food. He was a tall-ass dude. He was, like, from over there, from... I don't know what part of the country, but he he looked like he was like one of those country dudes. He was pretty On the big, East Coast, probably. and yeah, and he freaking he would always get caught with food, and then at the end he would tell us that he would go dumpster diving for MREs. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that guy was special, man. Wow. Any platoon terrorists? Uh, there was there was a few that the drone instructors would try to pin as the platoon terrorists. So everyone would just hate him. It was this guy <laughs> named Singletary. He was a great kid, like a good guy. But for some reason, like because he was like small in figure, like everything would always be Singletary's fault. Yeah. So, you know, poor guy. He made it through, you know, tough ass dude, but like yeah, he was like he'd always be the reason why we'd get in trouble. Yeah, don't be a platoon terrorist, guys. Whatever you do. So graduating boot camp. How was that like? How was family day or? Oh man! So I I I distinctly remember as soon as they released us for family day, just I I felt like everything just went quiet out of nowhere, and I I was just looking around like, what is going on? Everyone's just running, and then I just see my sister from like the distance between people like hugging and finally seeing their family, and she was the first person to come running up to me and uh, give me a hug, and like as as I was hugging her, I was just like. This wasn't real. Like it's just a dream, you know. Yeah, like I'm just, you know, I'm I'm out of the simulation now, and I'm just like, what is going on? I'm not used to this. But yeah, yeah it, it was a great feeling. Like the proudest moment I've ever had in my life was uh, like family day and graduation day. I've never been that proud in my life. It yeah. felt great. They, they everybody tell you like, dang, you look skinny. Yeah, everyone. <laughs> cause uh, I actually got the nickname Chicken Nugget in boot camp because I looked like <laughs> a little nugget. chicken nugget. <laughs> But the thing is, like, there was another chubby Mexican that um, kind of looked like me, I guess. And uh, eventually he became Chicken Nugget because they forgot who was who. Oh, okay. Yeah. And well, I, yeah, because everybody's <laughs> bald there, too. So. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's bald looked the same. We all looked the We're same. We're all brown and tanned because, like, being out in the sun yeah. all day. And then your 10-day leave, you doing anything crazy? Mm, I went to like a like a music festival. The first thing I did as soon as I graduated was uh, I went to In and Out and got myself a Damn. a four by four animal style, and Hell I yeah. ate that shit within like one minute. Like I was I, I was still used to just eating super fast, super so fast. I, I was just <laughs> <laughs> done. And like everyone was still like on their second bite, third bite, and I was like, "Come on, guys, like let's go," because <laughs> I'm trying let's to go, go back to Vegas and like we're driving it. We're trying to drill here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People could die if you don't eat fast. <laughs> People could die. Yeah, but no, nah, other than that, like, uh, yeah, I went to In-N-Out first, went back to Vegas, and mm. just started hanging out with all the boys. Uh, my best friend, JJ, was still in still in boot camp because mm. he went three weeks after I did. So, you know, I just I just made the mes- best of it, said hi to all my friends, uh, said what's up to my family. Everyone kept saying that, wow, this dude is so skinny because, yeah, well, I was a chicken nugget, and now I was a, yeah. I was a chicken tender. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, we got to hang out on your 10-day leave too, right? Yeah, a little bit. I, I did go to El Dorado to, to say what's up to the RTC gang. I wore my dress blues. I think I did not put my medal on. 
Damn, and only fuck. one person caught it. You remember Berkeley? I think so. Yeah, I he, he so. saw a picture someone posted, and he's like, "Hey, where's your medal?" I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that boot." Yeah, but I mean, hey, that was my first time ever putting on dress blues. Well, besides when we were changing into them, yeah, I didn't wear it because I didn't know how to wear it. I didn't know how to put <laughs> that that belt, so I was like, "I'm not gonna wear it." Yeah, that was probably my favorite part of the uniform is the belt, like where it sat. It was yeah. just super comfy and made me feel slim. Yeah. Best uniform ever. Just saying. It really is. Yeah. That's probably another big reason why I joined the Marines out of all the other branches. Mm. Yep. Dress blues. Ladies love them. It's a uh, lady magnet. <laughs> so what about MCT? You like MCT? MCT, I actually loved. I hated the hike. To oh, the hike. To, uh, what was it called? That little mountain range where we start doing all our shooting, night shoots, and like throw grenades, all that stuff. I That, that hike there... And the hike back. I, I just hated that. I was already tired from all yeah. the hiking in boot camp. But, uh, yeah, once we got there, like, it was great. Like, I remember at night, I would have, like, a lot of cool-ass experiences with the, with the homies. Like, it's all people from the same company, but the platoon changed up. So, it's not the same platoon as you get in yeah. boot camp. And then uh, you get to meet other people same. yeah, as well. Listen to their little boot camp stories of what happened in their little platoon. And just uh-huh. just talk to them in the middle of the night. I remember one time, like, it was super cold out there. And, like... Just a bunch of us just started getting, like, super close to each other, like penguins and stuff. And we were just like, all right, cool. This is how we warm up. And I remember that uh, one of those nights, uh, people were starting to try uh, dip for the first time, chewing tobacco. Oh, and literally every single one who tried chewing tobacco for the first time threw up. It was, <laughs> it was like a rite of passage for everyone. I didn't get to yeah. try it out that night. I tried it out, like, a couple months later. I tried it once, not in boot camp, but, like, way before. And yeah, it just it made me throw up. Oh yeah, my no, my s- first two times I think I threw up. Yeah. <laughs> After that though, like you, you understand why people like it. Yeah, I don't. The first time I was like, nah, this ain't for me. Yeah, that's your rite of passage. Your first time, you're gonna have to throw up, guaranteed. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I know in MCT, the only physical hard thing to do is the hikes. Yeah, because other than that, like it's it's all like training. You're there yeah. to get taught how to actually be combat effective. Shoot like different kind of weapons, machine guns. You get to shoot the little Cheeto puff, the grenade well, launcher. Freaking MCT changed a lot, man. The only thing we got to shoot was obviously our M16s, machine gun, only like 50 rounds, and that's it. No grenades, no grenade no launcher. No grenade launcher either. No room clearing. Nothing. Jeez. So yeah. what was MCT like for you then? MCT for me, I liked it, but it was it wasn't that much stuff in there anymore, because I heard you guys do room clearing, right? Did you do that? Yeah, we had, we had to practice like the room clearing. What different um uh, different positions in a squad is like? You got your did you do land nav? Yeah, we did some land nav. Yeah, we we I cut that out too. Wow. Yeah, it's changing a lot. Cause from what I heard, I don't know if it's true, but like. They want to focus that more on the infantry side, and for like non-infantry, it's just like, I guess, learning how to shoot your rifle and hike. Well, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, if you're uh, non-infantry, your chances of seeing combat are extremely low. Really never slim. zero. It's never zero, but it's really slim. Yeah, it's really low. And then, how long was your was your MCT? Mm, like a month like uh, exactly one month oh yeah ours is like 28 days something like that yeah I, th- I think it was 28 days like that's pretty much just about a month okay and then after that you go to your schoolhouse Where'd yeah you? i was actually i was hoping to get another 10 days leave but i was like nah, oh yeah you don't. <laughs> that's when i knew that like you know the marine corps just wants to use a- me up already <laughs> everybody everybody is like are we getting leave after this like nope nope you're going straight, straight to the schoolhouse, to the schoolhouse. And everyone else that was doing aviation in MCT was all excited about going to Pensacola, Florida. And I started getting excited, too. I'm like, oh, yeah, I went in as an aircraft mechanic. You know, we'll be hanging out in Pensacola, start hanging out, doing all this stuff, start going to the gym. But now I got sent to uh, North Carolina because I guess for my school, it's only three months school. I got picked up right away. So it it was just like it was instant. And I hit the fleet literally like maybe six months after I graduated boot camp. 
You're station in North Carolina? Yep. I had, like, as soon as I graduated the schoolhouse, all I did was move across the street. <laughs> like, I was excited. I was like, all right, I can't wait to get out of here. Like, I was, I was glad I got to, like, see another part of the country. But yeah. to stay there for my entire enlistment, I was like, nah, this ain't it. Come on. <laughs> yeah, the mosquitoes suck. Yeah. I mean, you were there your whole life. I mean, not your whole life, but, like, your whole enlistment. The whole, yeah, whole enlistment. I was only there for two weeks, and the mosquitoes sucked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, humid conditions, like it yeah. rains a lot. I liked it though. I mean, a lot of great people, a lot of great experiences. Uh, I know for a fact if I was stationed somewhere else, my whole entire career would have been so much different. It really depends on where they station you, where you like become who you are. Yeah. I actually, I told my instructor too that I did not want to stay here in North Carolina. I was cool with Japan, send me to Hawaii, California, anywhere but here. <laughs> but my entire class just had to move across the street. That's it. Damn. Wherever the Marine Corps needs you, right? No, yeah, I guess they needed me over there in the East Coast. Yeah. Just to haze me more. <laughs> Shoot. Well, here's where, like, freaking my curiosity is for you because you're active. I'm only reserves. So how's it active life like? It's, uh... It's definitely a high speed, low drag. Like, especially if you're the new guy, just be prepared to just be everyone's bitch. Like, that's the easiest way to put it. Like, for me, at the time, they would not let me sit down. They wouldn't let me do anything like calm or relaxing. Like, I'd always be running everywhere I go. If I gotta go to the bathroom, I gotta be running there and come back. And then, like, if I'm if we're not doing anything, there's not a lot of maintenance going on. I have to have my eyes in the book studying because uh, I will not get respected until I start getting quals and or maybe go on a deployment. But, yeah, it's just high speed, low drag. Like it was uh, pretty tough the first like year and a half, first two years. Eventually, once you get your quals, once you know your work, uh, get it, get cool with everyone, maybe go on a deployment. Then it kind of calms down a little bit and then you become that salty guy who just like angry at all the little new motivated guys <laughs> <laughs> and you just want to stop them from being motivated stop them from smiling like hey if i had to suffer you gotta suffer Damn. you're a corporal no yeah i was actually supposed to be a sergeant i got um oh, i met the points and everything i just needed a uh, corporal's course oh. the thing is when i got available to do corporal's course I, w I already only had like four months left in the marines so i decided to give it to someone else another corporal who uh had two more years left mm -hmm. so i was like all right you know like i have four months left then i'm gonna be out like this isn't gonna matter for me and i wanted to give my opportunity for one of my junior marines to maybe become a sergeant right on yeah but i left as a corporal any freaking cool stories you want to say and there's a bunch honestly uh i remember I have to remember them i remember we went out to freaking the Marine Corps birthday? Yeah, the Marine Corps birthday, we went out. You were telling me about that gunny that was talking back to the Sergeant Major. Yeah. <laughs> Gunnery, the scariest motherfucker I've ever met in my life. This dude's like, like six foot nine or something. Like, just always, like, he was a prior <laughs> drill instructor. I actually got recalled to be, like, the company drill instructor, something like that, whatever it is. Where he's in charge of the whole platoon or the whole company. Damn. Is and he still in? Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure he's still in. I haven't uh, kept in contact with him in forever. He doesn't have social media. I have his phone number, though. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not going to call that, dude. <laughs> Shoot. But, yeah. So, um, pretty much, he was overweight, technically. He's a big, beefy dude. Just pure muscle. Super tall. But he was overweight. So, the sergeant major was planning on putting him into the body composition program because he's too big and bulky per Marine Corps standards. And so he goes into the admin office, takes his shirt off. He's like, this is what fat looks like. <laughs> so all you fat fucks look like me. And do it. Everything like everyone's screaming, raging. And I was like, it was, it was scary. Cause this dude's like the scariest man alive. And then yeah. he just walks past my, my sergeant major and like, he always has that stern voice, like that drone instructor voice. And the sergeant major just asked him, like, hey, uh, is everything okay? Are you mad? And he's like, he's like, no, does it look like I'm mad? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, the sergeant major started getting into it with him. And he started getting into it back. And then, the like, one of the captains comes out. 
And he's like, he's like, Sergeant Major, this is just how he talks. This is who he is. Like, it's okay. And that's kind of what, like, calmed everything down. <laughs> Damn. But, yeah, like, my uh, my gunny was not afraid to, you know, be loud in front of even higher ups. Yeah, like, you, you'd be surprised how your higher ups act once you actually get to the fleet or your unit. It's like, oh, damn, I, like, the sergeant actually do that? <laughs> or the staff sergeant? Yep. That's how it is for me. Like, I was just like, okay. Like, it's pretty, because you're used to that schoolhouse vibe. You're, you're used to, like, the their corporals or sergeant just getting at you or being super strict. And then once you get to your unit, you're like, oh, okay, like. You get introduced to staff sergeant. Is that how sergeants, sergeants actually act? Like in the Marine Corps, like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're just so used to just being in a learning environment where, like, you get your hand held throughout your entire, yeah. like, career until you hit the fleet. Then you're kind of on your own. Yeah, you're on your own. And it's up to, like, whoever is directly above you, like your corporals or your sergeants or even your fellow lance corporals yeah. to kind of guide you. So just, like, stay away from your staff sergeants because mm -hmm. they don't want to see you ever interact to, like, anyone even higher. It's kind of just, like... Just stick to your next rank above and then go to your next if they can't help. But just do your best to just keep it. Like, don't even stand out. Like, just. Yeah, don't. That, that's the best advice I can give anyone. Just don't stand out. Just go there, do your job, learn it as best as possible, and become the most proficient Marine you can be. I mean, always ask questions. Yeah. Always. For sure. Always ask questions. Always ask your the senior lance corporal or the corporal. Like, don't even speak to the sergeants unless you actually need to. But that's how I am. I actually ask the senior lance corporal there or the corporals. And that's it. Lower and higher. Yeah, because once you start having to go up to the corporals, then they're just going to view you as, like, trash. Like, trash human. Why are you talking to me? The freaking trash. <laughs> <laughs> so, any uh, cool deployment stories? Honestly, both of my deployments were mainly just out at sea, 22nd Marine Expeditionary Unit, both times. I do remember my first deployment, we were out at sea practically the entire deployment except for a week and a half where we had to stop in Greece to refuel, and then it was just straight back to deployment. Um, I do have a lot of cool stories in Greece. I just... A lot of them just involved being drunk, throwing up on the bus on the way back to the ship. Uh, some dude almost fell off the ship because they were too drunk to, like, like they were stumbling and almost fell off the ladder. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but, yeah, that's how, uh, that's how my deployment was, just nothing but straight up at sea, just working. Second deployment was a little bit more wild. I got to go to a lot of places like Oman, uh, Qatar. Uh, I got to go to Dubai for a couple days. That was mm -hmm. that was an experience. I got to go to that the world's biggest mall. The thing oh, is, man. at the time of being in Dubai, most of my friends were married. Uh, I was like one of the only single guys. Still am, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> 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 but yeah, they couldn't spend money, and I was I was just ready to go. Like, let's go to the water park. Let's go do this. Like all this cool stuff that Dubai has to offer. Is it pretty expensive in Dubai? It's uh yeah, it's pretty expensive. Like, uh, what what things cost here, but like maybe ten dollars extra. Mm. If you want to buy, like, a new pair of shoes, it's, uh, like, probably $10 more than what you would spend here. But, like, say, like, water parks or any entertainment? See, I didn't really get to enjoy any of that because of all my married friends. Damn. But I'm pretty sure it would have been exper uh, it pretty expensive, yeah. I mean, because it's a tourist place, right? It's always yeah. more expensive. Yeah, tourist place, plus they're the richest city in the world. It's pretty much just like Las Vegas, except they got a beach, and uh, there's a lot of people covered in blankets. Hmm. I know you told me that you had like a like an experience or interaction with with ISIS or not ISIS, but you said that they might have been ISIS and they were having like they had an ISIS flag, something like that. Ah, yeah. OK, I remember now. This is my first deployment uh, hmm. USS Wasp. I remember just out of nowhere, we had like six little small ships just circling us nonstop and i was Damn. just working on the aircraft at the time oh no no i was uh i was out on a forklift and uh, i just remember seeing all these guys like just spinning around and then eventually like the navy made an announcement like hey everyone get inside i, I did see them uh, like flying like a like what could have been an isis flag 
and we started having like people just lined up with their with their weapons, just pointing at them, seeing like if we could drive them off. Because what are they gonna do to a giant ship? Exactly. Like they're they're really not gonna do shit to us. Like, so we're just there to kind of just scare them off, and yeah, eventually they just started going off. They just left. Were they like, like? Uh, Eastern looking people or like Africans? It was kind of hard to tell because they were all pretty covered. You um, know, like, the way the Muslims cover themselves up. Mm. And I just remember seeing like six six little small boats just circling us nonstop. That's weird. Why would they even try to do that? I don't know. Could have been just regular pirates. Yeah. I mean, there was a ship uh, about two miles away from us and it looked like it was uh, it was capsizing. So maybe they they were going from that ship to our ship to, like, see what was going on. And I don't really know. They don't really tell us what's going on on deployment. All we know is, like, we have to do our job. That's Isn't that, like, in the whole military? Like, you don't even know what's going on in the world? Yeah. Like nobody tells you. And, and they, they expect you to keep up with the news. <laughs> like. <laughs> and then, like, civilians are like, are we going to war? Are we going to war? I just tell that, man. Like, I don't know, man. I only know what you know. So <laughs> if we go to war, you'll find out before I even. Do. Yeah, like you'll find out if we're going to war first with <laughs> me. That's what's it's pretty crazy. Like I, once you're in, you get to like see the civilian life, how they actually think. And just because you're in the military, they expect you to know everything. Yeah, dude, I remember mm. I, I got asked if I know anything about the UFO. Yeah, and, how come everybody... Top secret <laughs> stuff? Why does everybody <laughs> always ask that? Bro, because they expect us because we work for the government <laughs> to know. Like, like they're going to tell us something like fresh out of high school, little Marine. Right? <laughs> like, I think you need, like, freaking top secret clearance. And, and, even an, though, and a need to know. And even though, you can have like... have top secret and they still get, ain't going to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think... Any uh, special operation people know? Nah, like SEALs don't even know what's going on with the UFOs. Nah. Unless you're like in the freaking aircraft and flying. And you see one. And you see one. Because I did hear stories. Yeah, no. Uh, Like if you work night shift, which I do work night shift on, on deployments. That's usually what I what I work. Uh, You do see a bunch of like. Like, yeah. most of the time, they're just, like, shooting stars or something. You're in the middle of the ocean. There's, like, no pollution. You could see clearly just yeah. about everything in the sky. Most beautiful thing ever. And, yeah, you could see, like, what could be a UFO or something, just, like, a flashing light, like, stopping near you and then, like, just zooming off. And you're Damn. just like, dude, what the hell is that? And, like, no one talks about it. Like, they're just like, yeah, did you see that? Yeah, I did. UFOs? Yeah. Cool. Why well, do you think nobody talks about it? Because <laughs> they're, they're scared or they just nah, don't want to believe? It, it's just because, like... If we talk about UFOs, then, like, I don't know. I, I guess people, like, just don't take it serious anymore. Yeah, At least they, not in the military. Like. Or they would be like, oh, you're just crazy, man. Like, Yeah. Because, like, I, I do remember uh, there was uh, one other Marine with me, and he's like, dude, imagine, like, if we could drink with them or imagine fucking <laughs> an alien. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> that'd be wild. <laughs> God damn, man. Yeah, like, the military, like, especially the lower ranks, like, we don't really take a lot of shit serious. Like the Lance just, Corporals, man. Yeah, we just fuck around with each other the whole time. Because you kind of have to, don't you? Yeah, that's the only way you can get through what you're doing. It's yeah, just like, you kind of have to, like, mess around or else you would just go crazy. Mm-hmm. Can't be serious all the time. Yeah, you can't be serious all the time. Everyone has a personality. The thing is, like, in the military, a lot of people have that, like, hive mindset pretty much because we all have one purpose, one goal. So you kind of you kind of see everyone else as kind of just, like, being a part of that hive right. that's all it is i mean obviously like be professional complete the mission be like when it comes to work do the work but when it comes to like actually have some downtime like that's when you could actually like mess around and say dumb crap yep and that's the best part of the military too is the downtime <laughs> <laughs> oh, man i know i know motor t gets a lot of downtime yeah, I know a lot of people actually, it's either usually infantry or motor T that they join. <laughs> motor T is a really popular MOS. Yeah. I don't really know much about it. I was uh, I don't really know much about the ground side. I know I just mainly know the aviation side. Yeah, same here. I just, I mean, I'm only reserves, but the motor T usually, uh, what do you say? They help out the infantry. Yeah. So we get to hang out with a lot of them. 
And it's pretty, like, how can I say this? I don't want to say, like, they're weird. Because they probably think we're weird, too. Because they probably think, like, oh, these freaking want to be grunts over here. But then at the same time, like, we're we're interested. We're interested in learning their tactics, too. And some of them are pretty chill, like, to actually teach us. And then or, like, show us their... Be salty, like, man, get out of here. You yeah. You're not as bad as we do. That's, like, I really hope there's actually, like, people that change their attitude when it comes to that. Because, like, I'm pretty sure some grunts want to learn some Morty stuff. And Morty people want to learn some grunt stuff. Like, I, I get... Not scared, but like I don't really like try to approach somebody who's infantry because I don't want to make 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 fun of or like just get treated like whatever. Yeah, the, I, f- I feel like the infantry and the Marine Corps is just a whole different yeah whole different world to themselves. Yeah, and they hate everyone who is not infantry. <laughs> Anybody doesn't matter who you are, they will hate you. No, but like I said, there's actually like some grunts that actually like they actually welcome people that ask questions and they want to learn. Because when I was in my annual training, um, some infantry guys, they actually asked some Moriti people, like, hey, do you guys want to go out on the patrol for, with us? Like, learn how to patrol. And I was the first one to volunteer. No, oh, easily, dude. I would Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, actually, like, I enjoyed actually going out and patrol, like, learning their tactics. Basically, like, MCT stuff, basic, basic patrols. It wasn't that crazy, but... Getting that experience to actually go out with them it was pretty cool. And they actually, like, enjoyed teaching us. So I actually, like, wish more people were, like, act like that. But they actually invited us because they saw how we were actually serious when it comes to our jobs and we're professional. So that's why they invited us. So if you're actually a professional in what you do, you take it serious and you look serious, they're going to get that interest in you and welcome welcome you with them and it's vice versa too yeah because there is a lot of hate as well in between the branches between jobs mos's and stuff so yeah just stick to those who are professional and actually like want to teach you not yeah. those who just have like an ego exactly and i know like uh when i was in my island training too this one guy approached the the combat medic and he's asked him hey can i learn how to how to use a needle or like take out blood or something he's like yeah like pretty chill <laughs> and they actually like put a needle on somebody i but actually like, learned how to give an iv drunk in greece <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was my my corman buddy he was my rack mate and uh i was i was drunk like i i, I was seeing double and everything he's like hey 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 you want an iv and i was like fuck it do it and I just stick my arm out like that. And he does it. And I start feeling a little bit more hydrated. I'm like, dude, that was awesome. I just got a drunk IV in Greece. Hell yeah. And man. then he asked me, like, do you want to learn how to do it? And I was like, sure. So I just gave a drunk IV to uh, my corpsman. Were you, <laughs> were you good at it? Or what? Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, he didn't die. So I guess corpsmen are pretty chill when it comes to teaching. Yeah, dude. Everybody loves the corpsman, dude. Be best friends with the corpsman. Yeah. Save your life. Because that's how it is with us, too. Corman actually, like, wants to teach you. Because I guess you need more help when it comes to, like, doing that kind of stuff or that kind of work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, too, because, like, if, if we have downtime and stuff, like, people will go up to the Corman for the dumbest shit. Yeah. Like, Doc, my elbow feels funny. <laughs> Can you fix it? Like, it, it's yeah. so crazy. Like, I, I remember one time on deployment, some dude walked into my little rack area naked as fuck. And he's like, Doc, I have something on my balls. Can you check it out? And he's like, dude, I don't want to see your fucking balls. He's like, but you're the doc. You got to look at it. <laughs> and it was like a little little lump or a mole or some shit. He's like, uh-huh. dude, that shit looks perfectly normal. And he's like, okay, thanks, doc. <laughs> and goes back to sleep. Just make sure your, your mic is close to your mouth. Oh, yeah, my bad. Sometimes it doesn't register, huh? You could, like, push it too to move it towards your mouth. I got you, my boy. Because then they won't be able to hear you. So... I don't know. You want to talk about like the ending of your contract? How was that like? Mm. Or, or Gosh. like. So when I got towards the end of my contract, um, I was on deployment. Uh, I had one month post deployment to get out, kind of get used to being back in the civilian world, kind of just get used to being back in the United States in general. 
So I didn't really have too much time to kind of just uh, adjust and everything. Like everything just kind of hit me like a freight train. Mm. And then out of nowhere, a month later, I'm already driving a U-Haul across the United States. Like, all right, this is it. I got my DD-214. Cool. So it was kind of difficult to transition from deployment to being back to the States to being out of the Marine Corps. So it was it was a little tough, but I, I managed to do it. Here I am today. Um, I mean, because you're just used to like that rush and that pressure all the time right yeah where you're you're just constantly like on the same schedule you know work 14 hour days yeah and just uh rinse and repeat every single day yeah i hear a lot of podcasts about like uh special operators and they say like they feel the same way too because it's always like constant constant like running and doing the job and then once they check out it's like it's so, okay now what okay now what and then they go back home and they still their body is so used to that adrenaline that they just don't know what to do with it anymore so they just get depressed and end up drinking and it's a lot of like stuff that goes on but a lot of them like they recommend speaking to somebody or just try to figure out if there's any like uh what do you say non uh like organizations yeah like uh like the va or not the va it's like uh private organizations that are that are uh that are just made up of like veterans exactly yeah, yeah. There, there's a few here in vegas i know um there's a there's a bar i think it's called semper fi over in chinatown that's just full of nothing All but the like marine corps stuff leatherneck yeah, the Leatherneck Club. Yeah, <laughs> I felt so accepted there when I went. Oh, you finally went? Yeah, I went once. Yeah, I, I got my uh, concealed carry. And uh -huh. after the concealed carry, like after we were done with our firing portion of it, uh, my instructor told me like, all right, well, now that you're not going to have to use your weapons anymore, go ahead, go to the Leatherneck Club, and uh, you guys can have a beer. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, go there, have a beer, talk to a bunch of other prior Marines, and I'm just like, wow, so I ain't the only one. There's a, there's a whole bunch of people who are civilians who were prior military. You will yeah. be surprised. There's like uh, a lot of freaking combat veterans that served in the what is it the operations? I Operation Iraqi like Freedom. Iraqi Freedom, Desert Storm. There's a, a storm. bunch of Vietnam veterans. They're a lot older now. Yeah, I went there a couple of times. I haven't talked to any of them, but I went there for the Marine Corps birthday, and there was just a bunch of guys that like had their their um motorcycle club vest and yeah. i said like vietnam and stuff like that a bunch of all the guys with their beards uh i met a like uh somebody had a purple heart and yeah it's pretty interesting i actually wanted to speak to one of them but most of them are already drunk once i get there <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the best part though because they're more they, willing more happy yeah they say they say a lot of stuff they say yeah yeah did you, did you actually get to talk to some of them uh, just a few, like, uh, I got to talk to one Vietnam veteran, not for too long though. Cause I, I only had a limited amount of time until I had to go back to my concealed carry class mm. and do the, the test portion. You know what? Before I went to basic training, I actually met a Vietnam veteran at the Texas Roadhouse. He had, a, he was wearing a hat. He was like an older guy. And I went to him to him and I was like, Hey, um, do you want like anything? I'll pay for your meal. Cause I was like motivated. Like I I paid for your meal because you're a Vietnam vet and I know how the struggles you guys went through. And he was like, "Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you." And he was just like talking to me how like when he came back from the Vietnam War, how college people would like spit at them and throw stuff at them just because he served in the war. And he was Navy too. Yeah, that was a very contro controversial. Yeah, it was pretty crazy, and. Like, just hearing those type of stories from an actual person that served is pretty beneficial and motivated, too. Yeah, because you ain't the only one who served. Like, there's so many yeah. other people that have served in the military. And he, he told me, too, like, oh, because I told him, oh, I'm going to go to Marine Corps uh, boot camp. He's like, okay, we'll just get ready, and you're never going to forget that experience. He even told me, too, I, I never forgot my boot camp experience. Yeah, no matter how many <laughs> years go by, you will not forget. Like, Yeah. Especially Marines, you are a Marine for life, and it will be a part of who you are for the rest of your life. Yeah, and I remember um, 
when we were at the airport, when we arrived from Maps, from Salt Lake, there was a couple of guys that, uh, Navy people, they were like, oh, you guys are going to Marine Corps boot camp? You guys are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think we joined? Because we crazy. They were like, you guys are crazy. <laughs> and, then, and then another Marine that was there, he was like, oh, damn, you guys are going to boot camp? Just damn. Like, just be prepared, guys. It's not, it's not, it's not easy. Yeah, good luck. So it's like, I guess Marine Corps boot camp is like one of those boot camps that it's just crazy. It's hard. Um, the oh, most difficult and the most respected. Right. What, what do you say is like the most difficult out of all the branches? I mean, it's the longest, obviously, but what do you yeah. say it's the most difficult? I, I would definitely say it's the most difficult. I, I know Army has their very difficult moments, too. Like, I've heard yeah. stories. One of my exes was actually in the Army, and she told me about their... It's basically like their crucible, and I was like, mm. oh, man, that does suck, but... Still, in, in my in my head, I was like, it can't be as bad as the Marine Corps Crucible, man. <laughs> well, how was your Crucible experience? We didn't get to talk about that. Oh, man. It was just nothing but just going back and forth, obstacle course to obstacle course. I remember we had three MREs for three days. I hear nowadays it's six MREs per person or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I had six. <laughs> yeah, we only had three. And uh, at night when we got to sleep for those two hours, or two hours? Well, it was. I think it was two to four hours. I think. Damn. I, I think it was two hours. We got to sleep two hours every night. We got to sleep like six. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's changed a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, who knows? It was still it was hard, better. guys. Yeah, it, was it was still, still hard. It was still difficult. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, we got to sleep for two hours, and within those two hours, like people started stealing other people's MREs. Oh hell yeah! Started eating them in the middle of the night, and I remember uh, some of my friends like. All of their food was gone, so I started. I used two of my three MREs to give out to the other guys who were with me, who were hungry, Damn. and I survived off of uh, those little cheesy pretzels. I had like oh yeah, um, the, ch- the freaking yeah, I know. yeah, yeah, the cheesy pretzels. I had like one full meal, which I think was like pork and beans or something like that. And uh, I remember the day before we had to climb uh, uh, the, reaper. the reaper. Yeah. Like that morning, I made myself one of those uh, milkshakes, the the MRA milkshake. Oh, the you put water in it, mm-hmm. and it turns into a milkshake. And then people call me a dumbass because it's milk and milk before exercise is never a good idea. But I did it anyways, and uh, I didn't suffer. It was cool. I did it. Dude, the Reaper is not bad. It really isn't. Like, honestly, <laughs> as long as you just don't look up or look down. Just look at the ground and just keep walking. Just just keep going. Just keep. I going remember like time. going that first hill. I was passing a lot of people, and then I was just motivated. I was like, "Man, we're officially gonna be Marines." This is it. They're like as soon as but you get like, to the top, you're gonna be a Marine. It's not even that much, to be honest. Everybody keeps talking about the Reaper and the Reaper. It's not that bad. Uh, anything before the Reaper is actually more harder than the Reaper. I think or the hike back. From the hike the back, yeah. <laughs> was even harder than everything. Yeah, the hike back. I actually wanted to quit, but I was like, hey, no, there's no way. Dude, I wanted to quit so bad too, but I was like, <laughs> what, dude, I just became a Marine. Yeah. Am I going to give up? And then you see that, uh, the cadence. Yeah, everyone's all happy, motivated. Yeah. Some people are still crying. Yeah, some people start crying. Then you get that Warriors breakfast. Man. The thing is, I couldn't even eat that much in the Warriors breakfast. No. I thought I could. I like I I had my plate fully decked out of like so many good foods, but uh, I just couldn't eat that much. I just wasn't used to eating so much. And then isn't it weird actually talking to your drone instructors? Yeah, it's hella weird. I, I was still like stiff. I was still, like, <laughs> okay, well, like they try to talk to you, me. just like, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a sir. It's a sergeant. Yep, it's staff sergeant. Uh, I think all my drone instructors were staff sergeants. Actually. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh damn. All four of them. So, like, for me, I make videos for people that want to join the military or the Marine Corps. What advice would you give for those people? I would say really look into if this is what you want to do because it's a long commitment. Four years is pretty much just going through high school all over again. And it's pretty much going to define who you are in your early 20s. And those are crucial moments in your life. That's, like, the first step you take beyond, like, high school. So, especially if you join straight into it, you just don't know what you're going to get into. So, you should make sure you you get the right job that you want and make sure that this is what you want to do. Make sure it's the right branch that you want to join, too. 
always ask questions. Don't always believe the drones st- or the recruiters. The like recruiters. ask them questions and then also go consult other recruiters too, because you never know if you're gonna actually want to join this or that. Or they could actually like ask Marines that actually went to it and then ask them. Yeah, how it really was. recruiters like every single recruiter. They're gonna try to sell you something. Yeah, they're gonna sell you. They're gonna say, "Oh, we have this benefit. Mm-hmm. We have this. Like, you should join us." And no, not really. The thing is, for my recruiter, it was the opposite. He told me like, like if you if you don't have what it takes, like you shouldn't be a marine. Yeah. Like don't don't even come to me. Like if if you don't think you have what it takes. Yeah. So it's kind of like reverse psychology, you know? Like. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the thing is, like, I I always wanted to be a marine. You know, if I'm gonna join the military, might as might as well be the best of the best, the most respected. That's why. That's one of the reasons why I joined. Yeah, to be the best of the best. I mean. You kind of motivated me, too, because you're a Marine. And I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to be, like, join the military, might as well be something that's hard. And my friend is already in it, so I'm going to be in it. But, yeah, like, the reason why I make content is because before I even joined, I didn't see uh, anybody who was talking about how much we get paid in basic training. I didn't see any videos about, like, married people that joined. So that's why I started making content. I like nobody talk about how long training is uh, the pipeline is, like uh, MCT, or if you get held back, or any like training delays, like the weekends, the ninety sixes, seventy twos are not included in training, and then nobody tells you that. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I started creating content because like it's really important, especially if you're married, to know when you get back with your family. And if you have responsibilities, then that's really important, too. Yeah, because all in all, it's your mm-hmm. life. Yeah. Like you got to make sure that this is the life you want for yourself. I mean, do you regret your, de- your decision of joining? or? No, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say I regret my decision of joining. Uh, but I do kind of regret the fact that I became an aircraft mechanic rather than air crew. Mm. Like that's, that's probably my only regret because uh, I've always wanted to fly in aircrafts. I w- I've always wanted to be a flyer. But I didn't know that air crew flew and shot machine guns out the back of the aircraft. I only thought that air crew was there to, like, prepare the aircraft for the pilots to go out. I thought that mechanics would, like, work their way up to be those air crewmen. But now that I know that, you know, I'm I'm sharing that wisdom with you guys. If you guys want to be cool and, you know, fly in the skies with the helicopters, shoot machine guns out the back, be a badass. What about those who want to join, uh, who are already enlisted, but they're in the dip? Like, what what advice would you give those that are going to boot camp? Don't even focus on school too much. Focus on, like, preparing yourself mentally for joining the military. As long as you graduate high school, because, like, in reality, no one ever really checks your grades, your GPA, unless you plan on going to college. That's when it matters. If you don't plan on going to college, like, honestly, like, as long as you gra- you graduate and have your diploma, that's really all that matters. Even then, some jobs don't even ask for your diploma. So just graduate, but have that mental fortitude of or, like, that focus that you're going to join this branch. Have that your main focus. Mm-hmm. I mean, something that we're, I would recommend is, like, getting physically fit. Oh, yeah. Like, don't do anything crazy. Uh, if you, if you're physically fit before you join, you worry less about like anything else, but you don't have to do anything crazy to, to get physically fit. So as long as you run a good, uh, PFT score, um, cause I know everybody's like, Oh, I'm gonna run like five miles or do freaking CrossFit. Like it's all basic training is mostly mental and it is physical, but if you're already physically fit. You're already, like, above all the everybody else. Yeah, because nothing ever really prepares you for the mental. Yeah. It's mostly, like, getting like getting yelled at. And you're not going to learn that in the civilian world. You're going to learn that in there. And mm. also, like, going back to uh, preparing yourself physically, like, getting yourself physically fit, focus on your running and your stamina. Just make sure you can run for a long time. Because if you're like a big, bulky dude, I've seen big, bulky dudes in boot camp go from being yoked to being skinny. Like, it didn't matter. And they were struggling Damn. on their runs. And that's literally the biggest thing that matters is your running. 
So just uh, work on that stamina, work on being able to run for prolonged periods of time. Also do work on strength, like make sure you don't get tired. Oh, yeah. Tired out if you're holding something for a long period oh, of time. Oh, yeah. Like the freaking ruck hiking or running. Oh, yeah. Or walking. Like that's that's mostly like the hard the hard part. But you don't actually get to do as much as MCT. MCT is where you actually get to do some ruck hiking. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah. But honestly, like, I, ne- I never f- had a problem with, like, the hikes. It sucked at the time, but I just kept going. It sucked even more because I was in the back end where oh. what we called Little Mexico because <laughs> all of us are short little Mexicans. <laughs> Man. But, yeah, we're always running throughout the hikes. It sucks because, like, it's it's an accordion effect. Like, no matter what you do, it's going to become an accordion effect, and Little Mexico is yep. going to suffer. So good luck to all you fellow Little Mexicans. Well, w- we actually did in basic training. We put all the sh- like all the short people in the front, so we Damn. did the opposite. Like our instructors actually I let us do I that. <laughs> that. I wish I was in the front. I was in the back running. Like yeah, our instructors let us do that because they <laughs> they saw how they're like struggling. So we're like everybody in the everybody who's short go in the front, and yeah, it kind of worked wow. out. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, but I, like I definitely struggled. One thing I did like about basic training though is how like. How everything is a privilege. Wearing a watch is a privilege. Unbuttoning that top button. Mm-hmm. Uh, putting uh, those boot bands in your trousers. Getting to wear your boots for the first time. Getting to wear, yeah, your boots. That too. Like getting your name tags. Like everything, everything you do, as as long as you keep going, everything is a privilege. And get, getting to wear that tactical tee, like everything, everything is a privilege. You get to earn it. And that's what I like about the Marine Corps. Like, everything you do, you have to earn it. It's not given. Like, that first time you get to get a high and tight haircut and finally have a little bit of stubs on top. Oh, (laughs) man. Like, and another thing, like, it don't matter if you're rich. It don't matter if you're poor, if you're freaking your skin color, what race you are. It don't matter if you're freaking... your sexual whatever Se- sexual orientation orientation it don't matter anything that like that your religion it don't really freaking matter man once you're in there if you're a badass in the street if you're a freaking gangster man it don't matter everybody's gonna start crying or everybody's gonna have their difficult time and once you come out it's gonna be one of the proudest moments of your life yep. just remember that guys like it's it's it was totally worth it for me and uh, I'm like somebody who's who could speak about that for others too. It's one of the proudest moments once you graduate boot camp and become a Marine. Just make sure when you get to the fleet, don't freaking don't stand out on the bad side. Don't don't do anything stupid. Always ask questions if you don't get it. Um, always learn your MOS and just be proficient, right? Yeah. Because I, I did hear the thing is, like, some people say, be yourself in the Marine Corps. Don't be yourself. <laughs> be a Marine. <laughs> be a Marine. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for inviting me, man. Like, this was actually a pretty pretty yeah. nice podcast. Love the flag in the background. I wish I had one. Fuck Very yeah, motivating. Man. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, if anybody wants to uh, follow you, what's your... Instagram uh, account or username. It should be, I think, O J A Y underscore D U H, as in O J Da. O J Da. Yep, O J Da. I'll drop that in the description box if it, if that's okay with you. Yeah, I mean, I don't really post much. <laughs> or if, like anybody <laughs> wants to ask you questions too, like that's. Yeah, yeah. Anyone like feel free to ask me. Like, type it in the comments. I'm sure Jose is gonna let me know too. Yes, sir. Well, all right, man. Well, thank you. And I'll see you guys again next time. Good luck, you guys. Deuces.